The housing market continues to be hot in Denver. Let's see what's happening as of January 2021. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Jill Uplegger with Denver Real Estate at Remax Edge in Littleton, Colorado. If you're interested in everything in the Denver area, then you have come to the right place. I post weekly tips, tours, and topics about real estate and living in the Denver area. Historically, January is the slowest month for inventory. We're just coming out of the holidays and we're in the midst of winter. And just as any other year, January 2021 shows a low point on this graph, whereas June or July are the high points. There was another low point last year, May 2020, the height of the pandemic. So what are the pros and cons in this market? Well, that depends if you're a buyer or a seller. A pro for buyers is interest rates continue to be at an all-time low. A con, shortage of inventory is pushing prices higher, which is a pro for sellers. Let's recap January 2021. I'll cover what's being forecasted for the rest of the year and how you can use this information in your real estate decisions. The number of homes sold in January was down 6%. There were 3,164 homes sold in January 2021 versus 3,361 in January 2020, a difference of 197 less homes sold this year versus last year. Home prices continue increasing due to a shortage of inventory. The average sold price was 550165 up 16% year over year. Single family homes, the average price was 628,837, up 19% to last year, while condos, townhomes, multifamily homes sold at an average price of 397,717, up 12% to January 2020. New listings were down 12% compared to last year, while up 42% compared to last month. This increase may be due to a positive outlook with the availability of the coronavirus vaccine. This increase of homes on the market didn't do much to improve the low inventory rate. At the end of January, inventory was 53% lower than last year and 12% lower than the end of December. There is currently three weeks of inventory on the market, three weeks less than January 2020 and one week more than December. Remember, a balanced market is five to six months of inventory. Average days on market was 26, down 19 days compared to last year. Showings were up 21% in January versus last year. Buyers are still on the hunt for a home that meets their needs. There were almost 100,000 showings versus 83,000 last year. There continues to be more buyers than there are homes for sale. So when a home comes on the market, it can quickly go under contract. This can vary by city or neighborhood and the type of home. So what's being forecasted for the housing market in 2021? Will interest rates increase? Will prices decrease? In a nutshell, analysts are forecasting that once the coronavirus vaccine has been given to the majority of the population, we'll see an increase in homes coming on the market. As more homes come on the market, it is felt that interest rates will increase slightly but forecasters are saying they don't expect it to go above 4% by the end of 2021. Also, as more homes come on the market, analysts believe we should see a leveling of prices. How quickly will all this occur? I wish we had a crystal ball so we could look into the future. With so little inventory right now, it's hard to say how long it'll take before we'll have months of inventory, which will give some relief to buyers. Unfortunately, at this time, prices are still on the rise due to the low inventory. If you wait for more inventory to come on the market, will you then have higher interest rates, which then diminish your purchasing power? Let's go through an example. This doesn't take into account your credit score or other factors. It's just a simple example. Let's say you got a 30-year conventional mortgage on a $500,000 home with 5% down at 2.99% interest rate. Your monthly payment would be $2,356. At an interest rate of 3.1%, your payment would be $2,384. At 3.5%, $2,488. And at 4%, $2,623. Although there is only $132 difference between the interest rate of 2.99 versus 3.5, times that by 12 months. In one year, you would pay an additional $1,584 more and for the life of the loan, an additional $96,000.
Being able to buy or refinance at a lower interest rate is definitely within your best interest. I'm keeping a close eye on the market. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to contact me. I'm here to help you in making well thought out decisions. If you found today's topic helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe to my channel so you'll get notifications every time I post a video and you won't miss a thing.